It seems we hear a lot about skimwalkers, but it seems a lot of those skimwalker stories are actually misidentified not deer encounters. Welcome back to the swamp, my friends. Today I'm going to be sharing some creepy and allegedly true encounters with the mystical and downright terrifying creature known as not deer. As always, if you have a story that you would like to share in a future episode, whether it's an encounter with a not deer or something else, please be sure to submit your story at swampdweller.net or the email you can find in the description down below. Joining me today is one of my good friends, The Scary Truth. If you enjoy their narrating voice, please be sure to check out their channel in the description down below. Before we jump right into these stories, Swamp Folk, I just have to take a quick moment to remind you, for those who may not have heard, I have joined the Chilling family, and I want to make sure you take advantage of the free trial if you haven't yet. Chilling is the new home of horror, and an amazing mobile app that allows you to do things that are just not possible on YouTube. With hundreds of amazing stories and new ones being added every single week, there is never a dull moment on the Chilling app. We give you so much flexibility to listen the way you want. There are curated playlists for you to check out, or you can create your own. We also have a chilling exclusive feature, our ambient sound menu. You can change the background noise of a story that will fit your mood at a whim. It is an absolute game changer. Of course, this is offered completely and totally ad free. That's right, no ads, just hours and hours of uninterrupted, horrifying, creepy, and all around spooky content. And we're just getting started. We have been uploading everything from vintage classic novels, vintage horror radio shows, and more. And we're always building something new. I couldn't be more excited to have the opportunity to be a part of this journey. I hope you can join us. Download now and start your free trial today. Click the link in the description below or simply search Chilling in the App Store. And come join me, Being Scared, Your Maker, Mr. Creepypasta, Mr. Creeps, Let's Read, and many more narrators on the Chilling app. Hello, Swamp Dweller. Thanks for reading my story. I must start by saying that this story falls about average, or maybe even just slightly average, on the scary meter. But it is a strange event that I found discussion-worthy. So maybe some of you will rate it high on the strange meter. I lived in the third house at the end of a dead-end road just outside of a small town in Ohio. Many strange and dark things happened there. Maybe I will share those stories in some other videos. But one night... I was left perplexed by something I saw from my bedroom window. This old house did not have central air. Although I had a window unit in my bedroom, I liked to shut it off and open my window on cool, breezy nights. I loved listening to the sounds of nature. Surrounding the dead-end road, there were many miles of woods. Seeing coyote, raccoon, possum, and deer were an everyday occurrence. There were many times throughout many nights where the woods would go silent. I would think most of you know when the woods go silent, there's usually a predator of some kind nearby. One night, I had my windows up. It's after midnight and I'm just browsing Pinterest on my phone, when the woods suddenly go quiet. It seemed like five minutes or so before I actually noticed how long everything had been silent. You could have heard a pin drop. Normally the woods would go silent for a couple of minutes. Being curious and wondering if coyotes were sniffing around my front porch again, I got up and looked out my bedroom window that faces the front of the house. Now at this time, I can't remember if I had started listening to these kinds of podcasts yet, so I'm not sure if I had heard your stories about Wendigos or not deer creatures. Listening to one of your latest podcasts made me remember this event and realized what I saw may be one of these creatures I've been hearing about. For context, the road from the front of the house was paved and went straight into a portioned Y off into our driveway to the left. The other portion went straight ahead to the right and the Y turned into a dirt and gravel road. When I looked at the window, everything was still silent, and I was surprised to see what appeared to be a very large and lonely buck walking down the middle of the road towards the dirt road straight ahead. I watched it, finding it strange that it was alone. Normally, when you see one deer, there's at least a few close by. As I watched it walking towards the dirt road, I thought it looked strange. First off, I'll admit, I'm no hunter, but this buck looked to be massive, easily two or three times larger than what might be considered average. Not only was it incredibly large, but the way it walked. It was like it was being worked like a string puppet or like it was in some sort of trance or maybe even how a soldier would march. It never turned and looked at me. It never made a sound. I just stood there, 
rubbing my eyes in disbelief trying to figure out what the heck I was seeing. I was 100% sober during this, just a heads up, and I hadn't really smoked or drank at all at that point in my life. Just as I was reaching the point to where I wouldn't be able to see it anymore from my window, I looked around. I'm not sure, maybe I was trying to see another deer or something. This was only for a second, and when I looked back, it was gone. There's no way it could have left my line of sight that quickly. That's when I realized I never heard his footsteps. This thing actually never made a sound. And just then, suddenly, the wood sprang back to life, and I almost jumped out of my skin from being so spooked. I just stood at my window, feeling bewildered. What the hell did I just see? Whatever it was, it was definitely not a deer. This thing made the forest, which was usually very loud at night, go dead quiet. The way it walked, its size, how it just disappeared. The whole situation was just so bizarre. I thought about telling my roommate what I saw, but... He was a non-sensitive person and not a big believer in the unknown. Although, a year or two later when the house was being renovated, he started to believe. But hey, that's another story. So, there it is. My not deer sighting. As I said, it's not necessarily the scariest story, but it's definitely a head-scratcher. Do any of you have a similar story? Can anyone tell me what they think I saw or what they think the not deer was doing marching down the road just to disappear? I just have this sickening feeling that if I made a sound or engaged with it, the situation would have escalated. I was always under the impression that there might be a portal on the property for spirits or unknown beings to come and go through. Is that what the not deer was doing? Just taking the portal back to hell for a dinner arrangement with Satan? Please share your thoughts and stay strange. Okay, so I'll start off by mentioning, I live in Oregon, not a quite rural town, but our town is small, and only about a 10 minute drive to what you would actually consider a rural town or area. Everyone's heard about the cryptids and lore, Oregon woods. I hate these woods, they're just vast and terrifying, but at the same time tempting and beckoning almost. I stay out of the woods and I don't hunt, or fish, and I might go hiking every couple of years with friends, but I make it a point to not go where I don't feel safe. I kind of brushed off all the stories about the woods here until I had an experience of my own, and I'm ready to share what I saw that night. My friend and I work the graveyard shift at a local bakery, and we always carpool she picks me up about 11.30. Bakery itself is in a more rural area, but the main road in takes us almost all the way out there. It's a well-lit road until you get slightly out of town. And since it's the main road through town, even at night, there's usually passing cars or people walking. From my house, it takes about 10 minutes to get to work using this road. For about three months, this road was being repaved. We'd have to stop literally right before they turned into the bakery to wait for the construction crew to finish whatever project they were doing. After two nights of being stopped right outside of work for over an hour and an estimated date of construction being done being three months out, we decided to start taking the back roads to work. The back way to work was on the opposite side of the town of this main road it took us out of town, around the outskirts of town, and finally to the bakery for a total of about 30 minutes travel time instead of 10. This back road was completely surrounded by heavy woods. There was a private drive to a house every 5 miles or so. No street lights, and no passing cars, no pedestrians. This road was extremely curvy. Just constant twists and turns. As expected, we see a lot of deer, and the occasional possum, squirrel. This particular night, we start our journey through the back roads, just as we had been all week. We got about 10 miles through, when my friend went around the bend, and then suddenly slammed on her brakes. I was on my phone and wasn't looking up when she saw it first. I look up, 
and right in front of the car is this gigantic buck. I'm talking huge. Not moose-sized, but definitely one of the largest bucks I'd ever seen. He was staring directly at us through the windshield. We were just kind of frozen for a moment. For some reason, we both looked down at the feet of the deer, and in between its front feet was a dead raccoon. It was clearly a raccoon. Its face was pointed towards us, ringlets on the tail, basically a stereotypical raccoon, except the scene was also huge. Now the buck was large, but large bucks aren't unheard of. This raccoon was the size of a huge dog, like the size of a mastiff. We looked back up at the deer, and it was still staring right at us, like it was making eye contact with both of us. My friend flashes her high beams, and honks a horn at it, hoping to scare it off. It doesn't run off without breaking eye contact with us. It starts to walk toward the car, slowly. We both are freaked out at this point, and my friend throws the car in reverse, backs up, and swerves around the deer. The entire time, it moves its head to keep eye contact as we back up, pull to the side, and drive away. We look back behind us, and this thing is just standing in the road, staring at us. As we drive away, we finally went around a curve and lost sight of it, but until then, it never stopped staring at us. We talk about this a lot, and about how weird it was. I didn't think deer ate meat. I'm not a deer expert. I just assumed they were herbivores. So standing over that dead raccoon was the most unsettling part. Even over the constant eye contact. Luckily we weren't dumb enough to get out of the car. But I always wonder what would have happened if we did. Since then I've been more aware of the lore around here. I've heard unsettling noises and screams from the woods. But this was the only actual encounter. I think I've had. Am I thinking too much into this? Or is it a little weird to anyone else? There are so many legends and stories of cryptids around here. And I'm sure you've all read about the effed up stuff that happened at Crater Lake. Just thought this might be an interesting encounter for someone to hear. No one else really believes us. But it's hard to believe something you didn't see with your own eyes. Alright, just to start this off, I was with two of my best friends and we went out on a camping trip. We went to the Redwoods, so I don't know if anyone has seen this thing in the Redwoods before, but what I saw was almost indescribable. So first off, when we were driving up there it was around 12 at night, and we drove past a deer that was abnormally tall. But I just brushed it off as a big deer or an elk when we got there. We set up the tents, we had a campfire going, and then we attempted to go to sleep. At some point, I had to take a pretty gnarly pee. I would assume it was around 3 or 4 in the morning at this point. As I was doing my business, I heard my friend Ethan somewhere in the woods saying, My name. And I was very confused. Because when I got out, I swear I saw Ethan and Nathaniel, my two best friends, in the tent. So, I was a bit weirded out by this. And, you know, when you're peeing, you can't really stop, you know, midstream. And then, I heard it. Again, but it was a lot closer this time. And I mean, it sounded like it was in the bush right next to me. So I turned around and I looked all over. And all I could see were hands around the back of a tree and an antler. They were very long and skinny. And they were pale, very pale, and thank the lord I stopped peeing at that moment. These, I call them hands, because they were not necessarily hooves, but they weren't fully fingers either. I booked it for the tent, but the thing was closer to the tent than I was. But luckily, the tent was unzipped, so I dove in and quickly zipped it up and tried to fall asleep again. 
But how could I when I knew there was a creature by 10 or 20 feet away from us? It was quiet for about 30 minutes or so, and right when I was starting to think it was gone, I heard footsteps around the tent. They were ever so silent, and then they stopped. Then I heard sniffing on my friend's side of the tent. Quick back note, my friend Nathaniel is a pretty big guy. He's six foot three, and he's not really scared of much. At least I thought. My friend Nathaniel heard it, and he woke up immediately. He stupidly said, what's going on? And right when he said that, everything went quiet again. There was no wind breeze. There was no sound of wildlife or bugs. Just dead silence. My friend Nathaniel went on to open the tent. When I was whispering to him not to do this, he stopped zipping it, and I told him what I saw. He said it was a knot deer, and he went back in his sleeping bag and told me to be quiet. If you remember, I said he unzipped it just a bit, and well, he didn't zip it back for some reason, and I did not notice that until the thing peeked through. Me and my friend Ethan woke up when he heard his brother Nathaniel say, not deer, and Ethan saw the thing too. Apparently before I went to take a pee, he needed to as well, and he saw it standing there. He went back in the tent, and he didn't tell anyone because he didn't want to freak anyone out. We had a Dodge Dakota with us, and one of the windows was broken and sealed off by plastic. Just to let you guys know for in the future, I watched this thing grin. He was grinning at me, and reached its hand slowly into the tent, and tried to grab Nathaniel's foot. Nathaniel really hated being touched. He was not a person that was okay with that, and I was surprised when he did not move when it did this. It was like the thing like paralyzed him. It quickly let him go though, and we heard it walk off, or at least we thought. We were all whispering to each other that we needed to run, so we made the decision to leave all of our stuff behind and get in the truck. Thank the Lord we had Nathaniel's keys, because right when we got out of the tent we saw it. We saw the thing that grabbed Nathaniel's foot. It was at least a foot or two taller than my friend Nathaniel, and remember, he's 6'3 and a big guy. Will paused for a second staring at it, and then we all remembered we needed to get to the truck ASAP. We hopped inside and put the pedal to the metal, and right when we thought we were safe, that's when I noticed the thing was next to me running on my side of the window where the broken glass was. This thing easily ripped through the plastic and reached its hand through like it wasn't even there. Its claws were at least three inches long, and it grabbed onto my jacket and ripped it very good. It tore half of my jacket. Nathaniel ran into it, and hit it with his car. We heard this blood-curdling screech, something I will never forget. Nathaniel and Ethan almost never talk about it. If you guys ever run into these creatures, let me know. We barely escaped that night. If we didn't hit it with our truck at that last moment, I don't think it would have left us alone. So, for some background information, there's a small town called El Freda, a little way past Tombstone, in Arizona. My grandparents own many acres of land out there. They harvest pecans and own about a dozen cows. This land used to be inhabited by Native American Indians. My best friend and I love to go out and find arrowheads, small bottles, and other cool things of this kind. When I was about 15 or so, we went to visit my grandparents. My mom, stepdad, three younger siblings, and my best friend Lauren. We got there, said hello, and then everyone went off to do their own thing. Lauren and I decided to go up the mountain and explore the old caves. We went up there, our usual way, and started looking at the holes that the Indians used for grinding food, and the cave paintings. We had only been up there for about 30 minutes before we began to feel uneasy. I felt queasy and started to feel like we were being watched. We decided to leave right then and there, and began walking down to where we parked our four-wheeler. We were almost there, when we heard a rock fall. We saw another one come shortly after that was much larger, and it came right above us. We totally freaked out, and took off down to the vehicle, and sped off as fast as we could. Now, I listened to a lot of scary stories, so I immediately started thinking of not deer and other similar creatures. Lauren managed to calm me down and saying it was probably just a mountain lion or a javelina. We got home and decided not to tell my parents and just move on. Later that evening, my family all decided to go to the lake to have a good time. The lake was only about a mile and a half, maybe two miles from the house. 
you follow a trail that has an orchard on one side and the cow pasture on the other. Once you get about halfway, you must get out and open a gate. So the rest of the trail, you're riding in the cow pasture. But on your left side, you're riding right up along this fence. And on the other side, it's just unkept Arizona wilderness. My family left a bit before me, but they left me the keys to the other four-wheeler. I left on my own and started the drive. The first half went without incident. However, once I got to the spot that I needed to open the gate, I heard what sounded like one of our cows. But it wasn't on the right side of the fence. It was on the left side of the fence. There was something off about it as well. It sounded almost robotic, I guess. I just listened very intently, and the sound became more of a scream. This startled me. I threw the gate open and quickly drew through it. I had to get out and shut the gate, but when I did, I heard the scream again, and it sounded like it was only a few feet away from me. Once I got the gate shut again, I turned to the fence where I heard the noise, and what I saw scared the absolute life out of me. There was this coyote thing standing on the other side of the fence, but it wasn't a normal coyote thing. It was mixed with like a deer. It wasn't normal. It's like its lips were missing, exposing its sharp teeth. His bones were sticking out of his skin that looked barely draped over its body. Its eyes were pure yellow as if they were glowing. I stumbled backwards and booked it to my vehicle. The thing jumped at the fence, making the most terrifying screech I'd ever heard. Its bones were cracking as it moved, and this horrible smell filled the air, like rotting flesh and rusted metal. I sped off to the lake where my family was sitting, laughing and talking. I walked over and took a seat next to my best friend. She immediately knew something was very wrong with me. I didn't tell her about it until we were driving back to the farmhouse together. She seemed to believe me. I was so shaken by this, I couldn't sleep the rest of the night. We left in the morning and after a few days I eventually felt fine. I still don't really know how I got over it that quickly. It all seemed unreal in a way. Like the feeling you get after you realize a nightmare was only a nightmare. But I know it was real. And I'm just really unaffected by it for some reason. I believe with everything I have that this was a not deer or some sort of skimwalker. With research and the fact that we were on previous Indian territory, this was the first time I'd ever seen one. But it was most definitely not the last. I think the thing is hooked on me now. I don't think there's been a time when I go outside that I don't think I see it. But this is the only one I'm willing to share for now. Hi Swamp Dweller. My name is M for personal reasons. I won't be saying my full name. I live in the middle of the woods. It's awesome. I can go and do what I want and usually I don't have to worry. I ride my horses through the woods and since the land I ride on doesn't allow hunters, I don't normally have to worry about them. Okay, now let me get on with the story. Like I said, I ride my horses through the woods, usually during the afternoon. One day, I got a wild hare and decided to get up around 6am in the morning and go ride. My parents don't usually wake up until later, so before I went outside, I made sure to let them know I was going out. After telling them, I went outside and pulled my horse out of his pasture. Elvis is a smaller gelding, only being around 15.3 hands or 61.2 inches. This will be an important detail in the story later, so please keep it in your mind. After I brushed and saddled Elvis, I got on and set out on my ride. It was a quiet morning. The sun seemed to stream through the leaves. It felt like a usual day, although it was a little cooler than usual. Elvis was walking calmly, the leaves crunching under his feet. I decided to go a different way than I usually did that morning, crossing a stream and walking into foreign land. When I walked onto the land beside the stream, something felt instantly off. It was quiet. Too quiet. The birds that had been chirping seconds earlier had suddenly stopped. I didn't really pay attention to this. I just kept going. We walked on. Seeing a clearing ahead, Elvis suddenly felt tense and just stopped. I was confused and tried to kick him forward, but he was not moving. That was when I saw something. A deer, maybe? No, this thing was too large to be any normal deer. I nudged Elvis a step forward, trying to see. Then, it moved and my heart stopped. What was this thing? It was taller than anything I'd ever seen. 
It had a skull for a head with huge antlers on top. Its body was almost skeletal. It was terrifying. It didn't see us yet, but walked into the clearing. I stared at it in fear, wondering what it was and how it was that big. The rotten odor hit me like a truck, and it was enough to make me start gagging. I was probably a hundred feet away though. How could it smell that bad? It took a step in my direction, making my stomach churn. Then Elvis moved. The creature's eyes snapped in my direction. The soulless eyes I will never forget. There was nothing normal about them. They were dark, but when the light hit them, nothing would reflect. I didn't know what to do now. We were over a mile away from my house, and there was absolutely no way Elvis could outrun this thing. Elvis was usually smart, but his fear took over. He just spun around and ran. I could hear the thing start moving after us, but I didn't look back, just holding on for dear life as Elvis ran as fast as he had ever run. Then suddenly a noise behind us stopped and the birds, they started chirping. The overwhelming feeling of fear was instantly gone. I didn't stop Elvis though. I just let him run until we were back on our normal path. I have no clue what that thing was or why it couldn't cross over the stream. But I will never, ever go in that direction again. Elvis is still the best horse you'll ever meet. And I will always be grateful for him taking care of me. I believe I saw what a lot of people call a not deer last fall. I figured your show would be a great place to send this into, since I see a lot of not deer tied in with skimwalkers and other similar creatures. There isn't a lot to this story, but it has stuck with me and every time I think back on it, I feel uneasy. I live in Colorado, in a mountain town south of Denver. The road I live off of is a winding back road through a valley. One side of the road is right against rock, steep like a wall in some places, and more sloping in others and the other side kind of drops off into the valley. Also, it might be worth noting that the mountain on the other side of the valley is a huge burn site with nothing but skeleton trees. This was probably around late August, early September. I was driving home late, probably around 1 a.m. I know the road and all the curves very well, so I was going at decent speed and probably wasn't being actively aware of my surroundings as I should have been, especially since deer and elk are common here. Anyways, I was coming up on the last curve before my street, and I saw a deer standing on the side of the road. It was on the side with the rock face. This deer, though, was standing completely still facing the rock wall. That doesn't sound too strange, I know, but there was something unnatural in its stillness, and the fact that it was just staring straight into the rock, nowhere it could go, was odd. But what has stuck with me is the feeling I immediately got upon seeing it. Just an ungodly pit in my stomach. I felt like my heart had stopped. And this wasn't the, oh crap, the deer on the side of the road surprised me kind of stomach pit. This was an absolute feeling of dread. It seemed like there was just something off about the deer. For the life of me, I can't picture it in my head or pinpoint what it was. But something proportion-wise was wrong. Like maybe its legs were too long or its torso was stretched way too long. I'm not sure how to explain it. I didn't have the time to fully react other than just slow down a bit and try to keep driving. As I rounded the curve, I literally could not take my eyes off the rearview mirror, and the thing didn't move at all. Not a flinch, nothing. Just stone still. Even after it was behind the curve, and I couldn't see it anymore, I still couldn't peel my eyes off the rear view. I pulled into the garage, hit the garage door closer before I even parked, and when I got out of the car, I couldn't stop myself from running up the stairs. I couldn't shake that feeling of dread like I was in danger. I'm not by any means superstitious. I like stories about cryptids and I think they're super interesting. But I've never really believed in him. But I never really believed in them. But since that night, as short-lived as that encounter was, if there is one supernatural thing I believe in, it was that creature. I know in my gut it wasn't just a deer. It's also worth noting that after I told my visiting friend about the experience, she admitted that a year before, when she was visiting for the first time, she felt a similar dread in the pit of her stomach when she approached that same spot. It seems like the not-deer phenomenon might be new, but I don't think these creatures are new at all. 
I've seen stories going very far back about these things, and that is why I am led to believe that I saw a knot deer that night. Thanks for listening to these creepy and allegedly true not deer encounter stories. If you enjoyed these stories, please be sure to hit that like button as it helps me out a ton. The more likes this episode gets, the more YouTube promotes it in the algorithm, and that's incredibly helpful to growing the swamp. If you're new to the swamp, why not join us? Hit the subscribe button and turn on notifications to never miss a new episode, as I upload them nearly every single day, and all things natural and supernatural. If you have a story that you would like to share in a future episode, whether it's a not deer encounter or something different, please be sure to send it in at swampdweller.net or the email you can find in the description down below. I'd absolutely love to see your story. If you enjoyed my good friend today, The Scary Truth's Voice, please be sure to check out their channel and potentially subscribe. They put out a lot of cool content over there. You can find the link to do so in the description. If you're on the go, but don't have YouTube Premium, but still want to listen to your favorite Swamp Dweller scary stories no matter where you are, you can download them absolutely free from iTunes, Spotify, Stitcher Radio, and just about everywhere else you find your favorite podcast online. If you could, and you're on Apple Podcasts, please give us a five-star rating if you can. That really helps us over there and is very appreciated. If you would like to support the Swamp outside of hitting that like button, subscribing, and maybe giving us a five-star rating on Apple Podcasts, check out the merch store. I've got brand new t-shirts coming out very soon. Plus, we have face masks, hoodies, and much more. I'd love to see you guys wearing some cool Swamp threads this winter. Thank you guys, as always, for supporting the Swamp. I'll see you guys soon with another creepy video.